My sister has been divorced uh, three times, talaq uh, shar'i, with uh, the inter periods between. Uh, can she go back to her husband in any way? See, these issues, the issues of talaq, should go to the qadi. You should go to the qadi, the judge, and he should listen to all the cases and the situations. How was the first talaq? Was it really valid or not? And the second one, and the third one. If all the talaqs were valid, and the man when he made the talaq, he was, you know, aware of what he said, because if a man says talaq when he was angry, Sheikh bin Baz, rahimahullah, he has one volume of his fatawa on the talaq. He mentioned in that. He said there are three levels of anger. Three levels of anger. The first level, a person becomes mad, black out. You know, some people like that. When he's angry, he doesn't see finish. So he will be talking, but he doesn't know what he's saying. So he said, if a person reached that level and he made the talaq, the talaq is invalid. Because he's just like insane, mad. Second level of anger, he said, he can recall, he can remember what he said, but he couldn't stop it. So some people, we've, we've seen people like that. When they are angry, they are shivering. You know this? Have you seen that? Like that. Very angry. And his wife is challenging him. He's telling him, are you a man? I don't want to live with you. Let me go. If he says that, say, no, I'm not a man. I'm not going to divorce you, by the way. So he said, if he reached that level, he's so angry. And he couldn't hold the words. He couldn't stop it. He said, also, that palag is invalid. The third level of anger, he said, it's no man anger. No husband will divorce his wife while he's, you know, sipping tea with her, you know? Darling, you are part <laughs> Any husband will do that? No. Always, talaq happens when people are angry. True or not? Maybe something silly, and some, most of the talaq for silly reasons. When you ask him, why did you divorce your wife? She, I cannot tell you. Because it is so silly. So it depends. So that's why you have to take your case to the Qadi who will ask you this detailed questions, ask you detailed questions, and ask you for more information. If all the three cases of Palaam, the first one was valid, Qadi said it is valid. The second one, the same. The third one is, that's the end of it. If he said, no, this one cannot be counted. This talaq is invalid. So here, then it will be only counted as, as two. So that's why, my dear brothers, try to remove this word talaq from your mind. Wipe it away. Not for the silliest reason for anything, the word talaq comes in your tongue. Because now the rate of talaq among the Muslims is so alarming. You know this. And also the rate of khula. A sister, every sister, I want khula. I want khula. I want Subhanallah. The Prophet said, those who ask for khula for anything, no reason, they are hypocrites. Munafiqat. And another hadith the Prophet said, any woman who asks for talaq with no valid reason, justified reason, she cannot smell the fragrance of the Jannah. Al Jannah to Haram Ali. So both the brothers and the sisters, they should be matured enough. Not for any problem, they just, the only thing they think of is the talaq.
Life is not milk and honey. Life is a lot of tests, obstacles, hardships. You know this. Even the house of the Prophet ﷺ, he had problems with his wives. All of them, they got together, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, said, we want maintenance. Give us. He said, I don't have. So he got angry with them and he left them. And he said, you will not see me for one month. And he stayed in the masjid for one month. Sleeping in the masjid, not in his houses. And the rumors went all over Medina. The Prophet divorced his wives. The Prophet divorced his wife. Omar came. He found his daughter Hafsa crying. He said, he divorced you? He said, I don't know. He said, how many times I told you, don't listen to Aisha. You are listening to her. See what happened to you. Aisha can say anything to the Prophet because he loves her. Aisha's father is better than your father. He said that to his daughter. Then he went to the masjid. And the Prophet ﷺ was in the room in the masjid and Bilal at the door. He said, ask the Prophet ﷺ that I want to see him. He went inside, he came, he said, three times. After the third time, he started knocking at him. Now Umar, he entered, he looked. He didn't see anything in the room. The Prophet ﷺ sleeping on the ground. <coughs> Now the Omar of the Allah, he wants to know to diffuse the tension. He said, you know, Prophet of Allah, when we were in Mecca, the women could not raise their, uh, their eyes up. The women in Mecca, when we were in Mecca, no woman would shout at her husband. But when we came to Medina, our women start learning from the women of the Ansar because the Ansar is so sweet, so nice. So they started to argue with us, to shout with us. The Prophet ﷺ started to smile. I must sit down. See? So first of all, Umar wants to make an atmosphere suitable because he wanted to find out. So now the Prophet ﷺ is relaxed, he's smiling. Umar said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, did you divorce your wives? <laughs> and the Prophet said, No, I didn't. Umar came shouting. The message is full of the Sahaba. And Umar is shouting, The Prophet did not divorce his wives. After one month, the Prophet went back to his wife. And the first one he started with was Aisha. After 29 days, Aisha said, I was counting the days and the nights with my fingers. After 29 days, the Prophet came. Aisha stood at the door. Another day. Boy, are in a hurry. He said, one month, right? <coughs> Imagine this happens to you. He is telling the Prophet another day you should wait because you said one month. The Prophet ﷺ said, Aisha, the month can be 30 days and 29 days. <laughs> can we have peace? Peace. Huh? <coughs> can be 30 days and can be 29 days. Imagine this happens to you and you tell your sweetheart, your wife, you will not see my face for one month. After 29 days, it went back. He said, Another day. What will you do? Hmm? You'll go for another month? So this happened in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu And one day, uh, Safiya sent food for the Prophet Sallallahu On the day of Aisha, when the Prophet Sallallahu was with Aisha. Aisha took a stone, hit the plate, broke the plate, the food fell on the ground, on the floor. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't do anything. Collected the food, put it in another plate, gave it to the Sahaba. Said, eat, your mother felt jealous. Nothing more than that. So this was happening in the house of the Prophet <laughs> Umar ibn Khattab, you know Umar, if Umar is walking in this uh, street, this road, the shaitan will take another way. And yet, one of the Sahaba came to complain about his wife to Umar. 
when he reached the door of Omar's house, he heard the Omar's wife screaming at Omar, shouting. I'm not alone. <laughs> this is every house it is coming. Alhamdulillah. This is Omar's house. His wife is shouting. Alhamdulillah. What a relief. <laughs> then he decided to go back. Omar opened the door. Say, brother, come. What is it? No, 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 nothing. No, no, please come. He said, you know, Amir Mumineen, I have problems with my wife. And when I reach your house, I heard her flaring up, you know. Omar said, you know, Akhi, he said, see Omar what he said. He said, you know, she cooks for me. She takes care of my children. She stitches my clothes. She looks after my horse. And he started listing all the things that he's doing. If from time to time she flares up, I have to take it. I have to overlook it. That's what life is. So unless we know that life is not something ideal, no. The reality is something. It's not that what you read in the novels, no. Headache, believe me, marital life is a headache. <laughs> yes. It is a headache. And the second wife is more headed. And the third more headed. It's not fun, I'm telling you. It's not. This child wants this, the child and this and then soon you start scratching your head and you don't know what to do. So that is the reality, that's what life is. So not for the Minimum thing, uh, silly reasons. Palak, palak, palak. I cannot live with you. What is this? Uh, uh, many sisters they send me emails or on the on the on the palto. Sheikh, I can't cope with him. I can't stand him. If your wife says I can't stand you, kiss her, hug her, tell her I love you. If he tells you divorce me, tell her I love you. That means when you say, give me tala, divorce me, it means love me more. Sisters, right? <laughs> yeah, love me more. That's what she needs. Because if the moment you say you are talent, she will start, you know, crying. That's wonderful. She wants you to take care of her. And sometimes she doesn't mean it when she says something. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't give them the power to have the talaq in their hand. Imagine that the women, they have it in their hand. Imagine that. First day. Talaq, talaq, talaq. Yes. But the man, he will start calculating what will happen to the case, what will happen with the custody, what will... He calculates all these things in his mind. Then he will say, okay, I have to be patient. I have to take it for the sake of the kids. Because he thinks rational and she thinks emotional. Okay, is this clear to you? So the talaq, we don't encourage it, inshallah. Yes.